Now we're going to attempt to do our lesson after that skit. Hopefully you laughed. I watched it and I laughed so hard I was crying. Um, I know it was not super well done, but hope you enjoyed it. It's good to laugh right now. I chose this series to put online because I know that there's a lot going on in our world and there's a lot that you boys and girls are hearing that might be frightening you, uh, making you nervous. And I just want to help you to understand that you can be strong. We know that the adults are learning from Pastor Don and Pastor Tom to get into the word, to learn from it. And some of you aren't able to maybe read that yourself nor understand it a whole lot, but you do have moms and dads at home you can ask questions to or have Bible readings with. So I'd encourage you to keep doing that. So our lesson today is going to be talking about eating healthy. That was our skit was about that, to make our body strong. We have to be spiritually healthy, but the Bible also teaches us that being physically healthy is a good thing too. So the verse they wanted us to start out with was 1 Corinthians 6, 19. And I'm going to read it off my computer over here. And it says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Now that verse is talking to people who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit comes to reside in us. So really, our physical body, the shell, is a house for God to reside in. And that is why you want to take care of it. You don't want to have a messy, sloppy home for God to live in. So eating well is a good thing. And they are saying, even online today, because coronavirus is so important and it's out there with all the information, that eating healthy is one of the best things we can do, eating your fruits and your vegetables. So this lesson on Daniel is a good reminder to us. It was important for Daniel and it should be important for us too. So when we're going to read the scripture off, it's going to remind us that we are to eat right, just like the skit was talking about. So I'm going to read for you Daniel chapter 1. If you wish to go and find a Bible that you have to follow along, you can, or you can just listen to what I'm saying. So Daniel chapter 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure house of his God. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that, they were enter to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names to Daniel, the name Belshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach and to Azariah Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel, but the official told Daniel, I am afraid of my lord, the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, 
and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, so they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in this whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. And that ends our Bible reading for today. So Daniel and his buddies were prisoners. And you know what that means. To be a prisoner means you're not in your own country, in your own home. You're held somewhere else captive. You don't have free will, free choice. They weren't allowed to eat the food they chose to eat. And that's why they had to ask permission in order to eat the different food. So it was very common in those days when one country captured another that they would take any of the young men, maybe even some of the women who were nobility and maybe good looking or strong and they would put them into service they were still kind of like slaves but they would have them to come and do tasks for them and so these fellows that we read about in the bible you know them by shadrach meshach and abednego and daniel they were taken by the king to be part of his service and to be educated and they did end up having very high positions in the babylonian empire so these young men that were chosen were not only chosen to learn about math and science and language, but customs. They were offered the finest foods that Babylon had to offer, food that came right from the king's table. And if you study history, you'll learn that that food was very rich and um, not always the best for you to eat. But because they had the money, they could afford to have that kind of food. But the boys refused to eat it because they knew that God would not be happy. It went against the customs of what they were taught. They wanted to eat right. And in the passage we read, it told us that they did allow them to have time to eat the right food, to eat the vegetables, and to drink the water. And every time I think of this story, I'm always reminded of Ellie, because she's the one in our class who loves her fruits and veggies. And I know that there's lots of others of you out there that I've seen over the last couple of years learning that it's wise and smart to be eating all your fruits and vegetables. And even Michael has been good about taking an orange every day, knowing that vitamin C is good for our bodies, especially when it's cold and flu season. So he's been trying to eat an orange every day and that's good. We all need to be, even us as adults, we need to be eating well. So Daniel and his friends, they excelled. And they ended up having all of the other boys eat the same food because they did better than them. They, they were healthier all around from drinking their water and eating properly. Now, there's a saying amongst computer programmers. It's an old saying. You might have heard it. You might not. And it says, garbage in, garbage out. It means that if you put bad information into a computer, then you're going to have bad information coming out. The same goes for our bodies. If we eat nothing but junk, we'll become junk. Your body doesn't operate very well. If we eat well, our bodies will be better for it. We'll be in better shape and we'll be able to fight off illness better. Why is this important to God? Well, because a healthy body can do more for God. Healthy bodies can work harder to serve the Lord and healthy bodies have healthier minds that can focus on God and do God's work. Healthy bodies are important to God. We can give them our very best in everything we do, and we can share God's love with others. So, the moral of this lesson is the next time that mom or dad or your caregiver offers you fruit and veggies, remember the story of Daniel. And sometimes when you think, well, I don't really want to eat it, remember that Daniel thought it was important to eat fruits and vegetables, and God kind of designed our bodies to need them as well, to get all the nutrition and the vitamins from it. So maybe I can just at least try it and eat a little of it. And then, the last thing to remember is that your body is a place where the Holy Spirit resides. So when you've asked Jesus to be your Savior, he lives with you. So you want to do your very best for God by eating properly and
spending time with him. So let's close in a word of prayer. And we do want to remember those that are, are sick and not well at this time. And I hope that all your families are well and that you're staying away from people and we're trying to be wise in what the government is teaching us to do, to be at home. And I know it's hard and I wished I could see you all, um, but I'm glad I can share this with you. So let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you for the boys and girls that go to our church. I thank you for their minds and their bodies, and I just pray that you would encourage them to eat healthy, and that when mom and dad offer them something good to eat, that you would encourage them to try it, knowing that God wants our bodies to be strong, and he wants us to serve him, to help others, and do the best we can. We pray for all those that are feeling lonely because they're trapped inside their houses, that you'd reach out and love them and encourage them and help us to encourage each other. Even for these boys and girls, maybe they can video chat with each other, or be in touch somehow. I just thank you so much for your love in our lives and pray that you'd keep everyone safe through this very difficult time that we're in. In Jesus' name. Okay, one last segment to our lesson. Let's see how well you listened. And if you can do this quiz, quizzes are kind of fun. This is multiple choice. If you want to grab a piece of paper, a scrap piece of paper and a pen, there is going to be five questions. I'm going to give you multiple choice. You can give the answers. And at the end, I'll go through and give you the right answer. Let's see how well you listened. First of all, question one says, Daniel was, now you will mark down A, B, or C. Was Daniel A, an Israelite? B, a Babylonian, or C, a Greek. I'll say it again. Question one, Daniel was A, an Israelite, B, a Babylonian, or C, a Greek? Question number two, Daniel and his friends were brought to live in A, the temple, B, Jerusalem, or C, the palace of Nebuchadnezzar? I'll read it to you again. Question number two. Daniel and his friends were brought to live in A, the temple, B, Jerusalem, C, the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. Question number three. Daniel and his friends were given A, bread and water, B, food from the king's table, or C, healthy foods. I'll read it a second time. Question number three. Daniel and his friends were given A, bread and water, B, food from the king's table, or C, healthy foods. Number four, Daniel and his friends asked the guard to give them A, their freedom, B, vegetables and water, or C, cream pies. Question number four, Daniel and his friends asked the guard to give them their freedom, A, B, vegetables and water, or C, cream pies. And the last question on our quiz today, Number five, when the king's men saw Daniel and his friends were healthier than the other boys, A, they made the others eat the same diet as Daniel, B, they gave them steak and wine to celebrate, or C, they sent them away. I will repeat it. Number five, when the king's men saw Daniel and his friends were healthier than the other boys, A, they made the others eat the same diet as Daniel, B, they gave them steak and wine to celebrate, and C, they sent them away. Okay, let's see how well you did, if you listened well to this video and if you got the answers right. So number one, Daniel was an Israelite. So if you wrote A down, you can put a check beside it. Number two, Daniel and his friends were brought to live in. If you wrote C, you are right. Put a check. The palace of Nebuchadnezzar. Number three, Daniel and his friends were given. If you wrote B, you are correct. Food from the king's table was what they were first given. Number four, Daniel and his friends were, sorry, Daniel and his friends asked the guard to give them, once again, it's B, vegetables and water. And number five, when the king's men saw Daniel and his friends were healthier than the other boys, the answer is A. If you wrote A, you got that correct. They made the others eat the same diet as Daniel. Now, I hope you enjoyed uh, this short lesson today. Um, if you want to try making a chef's hat, I know 
Ellie is a chef. She's been cooking her for her family. I've seen some pictures on Facebook. And Ellie, that's wonderful. I can't believe all the wonderful things you're cooking. I know that Michael has done his hand at doing some cooking. And maybe some of the others, you can learn to cook while you're stuck at home and you don't have school. Say, hey, I want to learn to bake or I want to learn to cook. Do something. If you want to make one of these super fancy chef hats, you can either look online or I can quickly give you how you make it. The headband is made out of two pieces of just regular printer paper from your printer and they're taped together in the middle and then you fold it over twice and that becomes the band. This part here is actually just made from three feet of parchment paper that you fold into an accordion and you're going to staple it inside the band and then you turn it inside out. But all you have to do is look up online. There's a YouTube video on making a paper chef's hat. So it's kind of fun to make. I thought it was pretty cool. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the skit. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. It's been fun to spend some time with you. May God bless you and may you have a good week. And I know you're all just crying bucket loads of tears because you don't have to go to school. I know your mom and dad are crying. Give them a good week this week. Talk to you next week. Bye for now.